This material is to help you apply for uh, renewals for firearm licenses or for new applications if you intend buying a new firearm to comply with the new Firearms Control Act and the regulations uh, concerning the Act. My name is Dieter Schallen. I represent Tactical Firearms. Tactical Firearms has just over 25 years of experience in firearm training. And through this material, we're not hoping in any way to replace a facilitator or instructor. But this material will give you a good idea as to how the process works in terms of the relevant legislation, handle firearms safely, operate, use and maintain firearms, and shoot firearms competently. The new legislation requires that all existing firearm owners need to reapply for their licenses and apply for competence certificates. And in order to apply for a competence certificate, you need to first go for proficiency training. The proficiency training is, um, there's basically two options for existing firearm owners. The first option is to write just a written test on the law, which is called Knowledge of the Act. The process is generally, uh, you go to a provider, an accredited provider, the provider will issue you with training material or you can um, apply for a course where the facilitator will go through the legal aspects and explain all the relevant sections of the Act to you. You then need to write a test on the law. Now this uh, written test is for existing or renewals only. For any new applications or for existing firearm owners who want a little bit more training, there is a unit standard and there's a unit standard for handgun, for shotgun and for rifle. This unit standard uh, clearly defines competence in terms of the relevant legislation, handle the firearm safely, operate, use and maintain firearms and shoot the firearm competently. On that assessment in terms of the unit standard, there's three basic competencies that we're looking at. The first one is on embedded knowledge, which is, which is your theoretical knowledge, um, the theory component. The second one is the practical skills. Can you actually get onto the range and fire the handgun? Do you know how to load the gun? Uh, immediate action drills, stoppage drills, uh, loading, unloading and firing the gun competently. And then the third competency is a reflexive competence. Now a reflexive competence is changing conditions. Should your firearm not work, do you have the theoretical as well as the practical knowledge to cope with that changing condition? So just to recap again, the three elements of competence are going to be your embedded knowledge or your theory knowledge, your practical skills and your reflexive competency. Now on the unit standard, there's two approaches to, to go through the unit standard. The first one is to do the full course, where the facilitator will do a formative assessment, which is forming your skills, and at the end there will be a summative assessment to sum up the learner's competence while the learner performs without any help from the assessor. Now on the full course, there will be formative as well as summative assessing. The other option for um, the unit standard is to do what we call recognition of prior learning. Now the RPL process is where you first need to go to a provider. The provider will schedule a pre-assessment meeting and in that meeting the provider will determine whether you're an RPL candidate or not. If you're not an RPL candidate you would then have to do the full course. But as an RPL candidate you then do the, uh, the written test on the, on the theory element and from there you need to go onto the range and do a practical assessment on the range as well. Now the RPL process is where you're bypassing the course and you're doing the straight assessment. So there will be a summative assessment on theory, practical and reflexive competency.